native out of Chaminade High School and Hofstra University, a seventh NCAA tournament appearance. Let's check out the starting five for Davidson. Nick Cochran, J.P. Kuhlman, Chris Cherapowitz, Damon Brooks, and Jake Cohen for the Wildcats. For Marquette, 23 and 8 this season, Junior Cadugan, Vander Blue, and Trent Lockett, along with Juan Anderson and Chris O'Toole up front. For Buzz Williams, now in his fifth year as the head coach at Marquette, he's made the NCAA tournament every year. Three NCAA Final Fours on his resume, including a national championship game in 2004. So we're set to go. Marquette and Davidson. 3 14 matchup in the East Region. Marquette controls the tip. I think Marquette wants to establish a post up presence if they can as early in this game, dominate the paint, and we'll see if Davidson can go back to their pace and get it going up and down the floor, which they like to do. Eight straight 20 plus win seasons for Marquette. Entering action at 23 and 8. The drive. And it's Blue trying to finish around the rim. It's knocked towards the baseline and saved, but out of bounds. Last touched by Cherapowitz of Davidson. Bob McKillop, high expectations coming into the season, considering what they did a year ago. He said this team dealt with it. Tough early schedule. They handled it, and then they showed their resolve as they got into conference play, finishing 17-1 and one in the Southern Conference. Ooh, long time to get that in, just barely making it. Oh, too late. He traveled. That wasn't good from the entry pass, right? Little hesitation, slow down, nothing working on that play. So early turnover for Marquette, 29 seconds in for Buzz Williams' team. J.P. Coleman can handle the ball, as can Nick Cochran in the backcourt. Right now it's Coleman matched up with Blue. Chara Powitz is inside. Cohen on the outside. And Cohen misses on the leaner. Hard drive. Kadugan trying to make the connection. And it's knocked out of bounds. Lockett was on the baseline. Let's take a look behind the stats presented by LG. The 17-game winning streak for Davidson. Number one in free throw shooting. Eight straight NCAA tournament appearances for Marquette. They get 31 points off of their bench. That is quite a jolt from the reserves. Oh, that's real depth in terms of being able to use it and using it effectively. Anderson turns it over. So sloppy start to this one for Marquette. Two possessions, two turnovers for the Golden Eagles. Well, there you go. He's out of bounds. Good call. Deflection. You never get back in bounds. That ball is deflected from out of bounds to a guy standing out of bounds. It's a good call from the officials and the correct call. Devon Brooks on a pass for Cochran, Vancouver, British Columbia native. Now it's Jake Cohen, Southern League Player of the Year. Tough. Hesitation doesn't go for Chera Poets. Good job by Lockett coming across the screen on the right-hand side of the shooter, but didn't quit when he got hit off the screen. Blue using the screen from Atule, the spin, and he travels. Three possessions, three turnovers for Marquette. So you want to play in the NCAA tournament, huh? <laughs> get, the, get yourself unrattled a little bit. <laughs> This has all the makings for a terrific matchup with these two teams. Last year, Marquette lost to Florida in the regional semifinals, 68 to 58. Cohen drops it inside. Brooks twirls and blocked by O'Toole. Davidson holds on to it. Chara Poets, yes, for three. 40% for a guy who's at 6'7", and that's a factor, right? You get to the force defensively somebody to come out and guard a big opens up the middle of the floor if they need it native of sweden now a junior chair poets averaging nine points per game davidson on the board first kadugan the lob Ooh. the catch made on the baseline anderson can't get it the follow doesn't go lockett trying to crash otule gets to it and gets it to drop and that's one of the things about otule he is just so strong and active and really pushes his weight around in a legal fashion. You just have to find him and push and shove and use your lower body to get him out of there. Yep. Out of bounds. Here you take a look. Marquette puts it up. This is what I was speaking about a moment ago. The inside presence, the power game, see if they can make it happen. Good finish there and good con 
Concentration by Otule. And a turnover for Davidson. 3-2 lead, 17-31 mark of this first half. Devontae Gardner in. Otule is going to sit. Jamil Wilson checks in for Marquette as well. We told you about the bench and the production that Buzz Williams gets. He has no problem mixing and matching early in the game. How do you feel if you Jake Cohen, though, right? Otule leaves. Gardner comes in. <laughs> it's not an afternoon off with either, two, either of those two with their size and bulk. Well, you go from 275 pounds <laughs> Otule to 290 Gardner. <laughs> Wilson off the side of the rim. Rebound controlled by Chera Poets. And any way you do the math, Cohen's at 235. Marquette opens up one of five from the field. Nice. Cohen head and shoulder fake. He's fouled on his way to the rim in a collision underneath the basket. And it was Cadugan who took the hit, but the foul was called out front against Marquette. It will work on Gardner. So now Otule will come back in, replacing Devontae Gardner, the Big East sixth man of the year. He just played 30 seconds. Well, I don't think Buzz Williams wants to take a chance at back-to-back -back fouls early in a game to take his guys out of a game mentally. So share the minutes and keep a fresh body on Cohen. Nick Cochran shoots 48% from three-point territory. Here's Chera Poets off the rim. Rebound is handled by Otule. And Davidson is one of five from the field. Chera Poets has a nice-looking jumper, doesn't he? He does. Wilson, the runner, no. Rebound, lock it. This is where there could be some problems for Davidson off the offensive glass. Blue, too strong. And Otule, another board. There's Kadugan, tried to cross over on Cochran. Kadugan's been playing very good basketball lately for Marquette. Hard-nosed guy who will take a big-time shot. The hard drive by Blue. He misses on the running one-hander. And the rebound to Kuhlman. Marquette is one of eight from the field. Kuhlman leaves it for Cohen, a three, book it. What big guy's going to come out and guard him out there? 39% from the three-point strike, and you know what? If you're a power forward, that's a long way yep. to go. Long way to go to get him. Out of Berwyn, Pennsylvania, Conestoga High School, the senior economics major, Jake Cohen, averaging just under 15 points per game. 6-2, Davidson. Junior Kadugan. Canadian against Canadian, and he comes up short against Cochran. The ball ricochets off of Kuhlman. Out of bounds. 6-2, Davidson in front. Jay Cohen, inside-outside abilities, have to respond. 11 to play in regulation. Ian and Jim, back to you. All right, Greg, the winner there will play the number one seed in the West, Gonzaga or Southern. The 16 seed still haven't had a 16 seed knock off a one in NCAA tournament history. 6-2, Davidson, the 14 seed, leading Marquette. Tyler Kalinowski is in for the Wildcats. The drive just beat the shot clock, but an air ball thrown up by Jamil Wilson. Tom Droney also in for Davidson. A rocky start at the offensive end for Marquette. There's Cochran matched up with Cadugan. Just about five minutes gone by in this first half. Marquette has been held to two. And they give Brooks his looks down on the post. Brooks, the lefty, turnover. Cadugan steps in, comes up with a steal, and then the foul called against Cochran. Well, the Davidson Wildcats out of the Southern Conference won the title getting into the NCAA tournament. Of course, that 2008 run with Steph Curry, Elite Eight, Curry, and Woodrow Wilson. And we're putting Curry in front. That's the order that they were listed in, so we respect that. Alphabetical. Yeah, we'll go alphabetical. 6-2 <laughs> Davidson. <laughs> I believe Curry had more points than Woodrow Wilson. I'll have to check the numbers officially. Basketball or political? Not basketball. Oh, okay. Yeah. Spread the floor. There's that dump down. Ah, Gardner can't get it to go, and the rebound controlled by Cohen. Nice tricky move there by Gardner, though, to pull that ball and push it through the defender's hands, but just didn't finish. Marquette's one of 11. Brooks misses on the jam, and he's fouled. Damon Brooks, the Charlotte, North Carolina native, is going to the free throw line. Terrific look. Brooks is always posting up. You see him down deep. Nice entry pass. Just doesn't finish it because of that little bit of a bump. So it will be Jamil Wilson on the foul. And Damon Brooks, 77% shooter. Picked it up late in the season. 
Undersized power forward at six foot seven, 227 pounds. Juan Anderson will rotate back in, and Steve Taylor Jr. will sit for Marquette. Elsewhere, Memphis with the lead over on CBS again. St. Mary's 32 22. Told you about Wichita State and Pitt on TBS and over on TNT. St. Louis on top of New Mexico State in the second half. And St. Louis with a terrific year. Great storage and crews doing a good job there. Huh? Just a fabulous story and showing that the a 10s for real. Clint Mann checks in. He has not played since January 17th when he suffered a concussion against the Citadel. So he's in there for Davidson. Here's that tempo. Draining and spilled out. And he's going to get free throws out of it. A foul called as Tom Droney, the junior from Pittsburgh, earns a trip to the line. Vander Blue gets called on the foul. And Marquette is stuck on two points on the scoreboard. They trail 7-2. to two. Droney, very versatile. He played point guard as a freshman. Now steps in at point guard if necessary two guard small forward good defensive player Davidson extends the lead it's 8-2 and as we just saw Droney very good at getting to the basket too and that helps on your transition if you have to get out in the head of the people you beat the opposition to half court you're gonna have some good opportunities coming down the floor and he's one that can do that Davidson did have wins out of conference early in the season against Vanderbilt and West Virginia Marquette is now one of 12 from the field. Anderson looks down low. Yeah, see, they're sliding in from the opposite side. Watch when the ball goes to the wing. There's good red shirt help in the middle of the floor. Blue flicks it out for Anderson. Shot clock is down to 12. Blue steps into it. Can't hit the jump shot, and it's rebounded by Cochran. Great work by Cullen, too. Defensive rebounding, even though he didn't get the ball with the big block out. Davidson on the move. Cohen lines it up. Count it. A three. Davidson with a 12-2 lead on Marquette. And a step out as we've spoken about the tall guy going out on the floor and Cohen. Not gonna, Gardner's just not going to get there for him. It's a delayed break. So they work on that all the time in terms of flushing people to the basket and having a delay with the big guy. Davidson is 3 of 3 from 3-point three territory inside. Counted in a foul. Devontae Gardner taking matters into his own hands. A chance at a 3-point play. Yeah, see, watch Gordon. He's good with the basketball. See how he brings it down a little bit. Sometimes you can get in trouble, but he gets through there. And look at the delay. Here's the delay break. Gordon just can't get out quick enough. And Cohen shoots it with confidence, as we touched on. Just a shade under 40% on the season. Second highest scoring average in the country without starting a game this season. Devontae Gardner, 11.5 points off the bench. And, and he just finds ways to score on the inside. And interesting enough, too, Ian shoots 84% from the line. The only Marquette player 80 or above, and we just talked about the beginning of the broadcast, 80% as a team for Davidson. So, ironically, that is 6'8", 290-pound guy is their best free throw shooter. From Suffolk, Virginia, Gardner converts. And that's why. It's a smooth-looking shot. He's got great hands. Derek Wilson has come on for Marquette, replacing Junior Cadugan. Trying to get another substitute in. Yep. And it will be Otule. So it's Otule, Mayo, Wilson, Anderson. Yes. Not to correct you, my friend, but he's not getting into this game. I don't think, is he? They're pointing to the bench. Well, the officials now having a chat with Buzz Williams. Otule oh, remains out there, and now he's being told he's going to have to leave the game. Gardner has checked back in, and Otule well, has not left the floor. Let's just make sure this works out right. All right, so who's leaving? Gardner came up. The officials just came together to talk about it with... Eric Curry and Michael Irving discussing. 
And Otule is going to remain on the floor. Get out of here, big guy. <laughs> and Devontae Gardner will sit. Otule, he, he stayed there with resolve. <laughs> I'm not going to... Me yelling at him, by the way, we are on the other side of the floor, so he can't hear us. 12-5, Davidson in front, and the two teams huddle up as the officials come together now to discuss this very controversial substitution. 13-11 mark of this first half. Did that official hand the ball off right. prior to the substitution? That's the question. Was the ball in play as Atule just came onto the floor? Obviously, that's not allowed. I think they should do it kind of like hockey or roller derby. Just, oh, really? Just jump on when you want to. <laughs> Hope nobody notices. All right, get back to playing, though. That's the most important thing, right? Keep your rhythm, especially if you're Davidson, Davidson with the lead. And that's officially the first roller derby reference of the NCAA tournament <laughs> in 2013. And maybe the only. <laughs> Give it time. It's a long day. 12-5, Davidson in front. And guess who's on the floor? Chris Otule. Thank you. He was not leaving. Well, they had to cut off the jam. There you go. Nice step in. Trent Lockett will take it in for the two-handed flush. So the steal and slam for Lockett. And Marquette has chipped away. It's now 12-7 Davidson. There's a little double team. Let's see if they can close. Cochran gets rid of it and gets it back from Clint Mann. Man, a transfer from Iowa State. Cochran fending off Anderson on the perimeter. Feed it inside. The back in by Brooks. And a foul called. Playing the passing lane is so important. And Lockett does it just perfectly there. The timing, the finish, and it helps at least Marquette to get an easy bucket out of it, which I think is very important to try to get them thinking that we can put the ball through and make things happen. Foul called against Juan Anderson. New shot clock to work with. Droney does get it in for Kalinowski for Davidson. Davidson up by five on Marquette. They sit on the perimeter, don't they? Working around. Cochran, a three. Shoots it at 48%. From three-point territory, that's ninth in the nation. Davidson is 4-4 from long range. And I love the way Bob McKillop's team is not getting out of character at all, right? They're just playing their game, comfortable, defending, little hole down deep. Trying to lock down Otule, and he's able to draw the foul against Davidson. And so here's their patient game, and then all of a sudden they get a good look. Wilson doesn't react on the perimeter, and fine, they'll take that shot as a team. They shoot it at 37% from the floor at the three-point stripe. Right off the bat, they've made a nice statement here against Buzz Williams and company. Man called for the foul. He heads to the bench. Cohen is back in for the Wildcats. Lob it in for Gardner. Junior Cadugan has returned for Marquette. Cohen, the slap away. Mm. Trying to save it was Kuhlman out of bounds. We get a timeout with 11.56 to play. First half, the 14 seed in the East. David Kent, because they're getting six offensive rebounds, but they obviously are missing a lot of shots, as you touched on. I am 3 of 15. Going over to the Davidson side, though, poised once again, starting things off, sticking to their guns, and basically shooting it very nicely from long range. Marquette with the ball. They get it in for Jamil Wilson. And they get a bucket. Nice set right there in terms of making sure they get one to the big guy. Oh, no turnover, you look at it. You don't look it all the way into your hands. You try to make something beforehand, and, and Brooks not catching the basketball. So Devontae Gardner now with five points and an unforced error for Bob McKillop's squad. 15-9, Davidson leads it. Cadugan, Wilson, Gardner, Blue, and Lockett, the five on the floor for the Golden Eagles. Wilson, the transfer from Oregon. Cross-court feed. Lockett, the transfer from Arizona State. Takes it in for the bucket. What's happening, too, is when the big guy, Gardner, is posting up on the right side of the floor, when they took that ball to the other side, now Davidson has to go from the middle of the paint to sag off all the way out. Good time to attack off the dribble, as we just saw. J.P. Coleman, very tight defense from Kadugan. Kalinowski now puts it on the deck. Try to set it up for Cohen. Back 
Checking in. Cohen loses the ball. A turnover. Dugan comes out of the pack. Numbers would lock it on the dish. Blue with the finish. And just like that, Marquette is down by two. Pretty good spacing there. It was tough because there wasn't good spacing to begin with, but they let it develop on the break. You always want to have your guys flailing to the sides, to the wings a little bit. All six of Marquette's field goals have come deep in the paint, which could be the recipe for the Golden Eagles. Foul called Blue helping out defensively, and he hacked Jake Cohen. Here's that defense. Nice work defensively by Kadugan. Now all of a sudden you see he finally gets it to the middle of the floor. And that allows him to have a just enough space to make it a two-on-one rather than a three-on-two on the break. Kalinowski sits. On the floor for Davidson right now is Kuhlman, Cochran, Brooks, Cohen, and Cherapowicz. They're starting five. Oh, what an entry. It's Kuhlman to Cherapowicz off the inbound. Derek Wilson is in for Marquette. Well, that's a lost art, isn't it? The inbounds play under your own basket. Generally, you see that heave about three-quarter court just to get it inbounds. Nice, nice set, though, by Davidson. Derek Wilson, the sophomore from Anchorage, Alaska. Running the point guard duties right now for Marquette. Blue, the penetration. The flip, no. Rebound tracked down by Davidson's Nick Cochran. Get it ahead for Kuhlman. On a cross. Go up. The entry, Brooks. He's out of bounds when he touched the basketball. Marquette, Trent Lockett touched it. And watch the end. Let's just watch the end cut right through here is where you have to watch for it. There's the screen. Nobody plays. Boom. Great cut away from the basketball by Chara Poets. Todd Mayo is in, the brother of O.J. Mayo, and now plays with the Dallas Mavericks. He replaces Vander Blue. Get it in for Cochran. Past the halfway point, first half. Cohen to the rim. Oh, playing with a lot of confidence. Jake Cohen, eight points in the first half. He's undersized, obviously, against O'Toole, but what he did there, he's had just a little bit of separation to make sure he could get by him. Wilson on the perimeter. This is Jamil Wilson. Denied, but a foul. So Wilson taking it towards the rim and that's where Davidson is going to have some potential problems here today. Brooks picks up his first. Tuesday, don't miss True TV's number one hit show, the all new season of Hardcore Pawn. That's Tuesday at 9 p.m. on True TV. Made the decision to just plow through that one. Don't even think twice, you just go for it. 1914 Davidson. Jamil Wilson deep threat nice looking stroke at 36 percent he's an excellent athlete and big frame 6'7 225 play some power forward and small forward yeah and plays the starters minutes and probably the most talented guy on the floor for marquette davidson up by five we approach nine minutes to go in this first half from rupp arena and a foul called plus williams can't believe it it'll work against marquette Sixth team foul against the Golden Eagles. Foul called on Derek Wilson, his first. New shot clock for Davidson to work with. Kuhlman trying to get the step. Mayo draws the assignment. Kuhlman rejected by O'Toole. Wilson on the push. Pull up, Pop Mayo. Oh, look at him go to work. Atule denied by Cohen. Things working favorably for both teams. Offensive glass by Marquette. Better defense, though, by Davidson. Jaropowicz using the screen. Cohen against Wilson. Brooks drives to the hoop and draws the foul. Atule with the last line of defense. Game summary with Davidson up by five, shooting it well, six of 11 from the field. Marquette is just six of 20, 0 of three from three-point territory. Marquette has benefited from five Davidson turnovers. 
Cohen leading the way with eight points. Gardner has five for the Golden Eagles. I and mean, one of the things about Marquette, even though those numbers are stacked against him field goal percentage-wise right now, I wouldn't be too disappointed because they were getting shots in the paint. And I think even though you missed them, it tells me that at least from a team perspective, we're getting those shots, which isn't a bad thing. Now we just got to have to finish them off. O'Toole called on the foul. He's got two blocks, his first personal foul. And second free throw here for Damon Brooks. It's rebounded by Lockett. Davidson is now three of six from the free throw line. Kadugan gives up his dribble, needs some help. Plenty of time to space the floor again. Mayo gets a touch. High screen Gardner. Kadugan the pull up pop, book it. That's where Kadugan can really hurt you. Puts the ball on the floor. The three shot is not his game, even though he'll take it. Off the dribble and the bounce, 15, 16 feet away and in. He's pretty tough to defend. First two of the day for Junior Kadugan. Tough distributor, great court vision. Cohen left hand, he comes up short. And it's rebounded by Wilson. And I love the name. Junior Kadugan just sounds right, right. doesn't it? It <laughs> And a foul call down low. Jay Cohen looking to defend in the post. He's certainly gotten his offensive game going. Cohen, the senior, leading the way. All right, Greg, thanks very much. We'll keep you updated on that one. Four networks, we've got you covered for the NCAA Tournament 2013. CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. 1916, Davidson in front. Foul called on the outside. It'll work against Clint Mann. That's number two on Mann. Coming up, AT&T at the half. We'll get you caught up on all the latest tournament news, highlights, and updates. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. Marquette over the limit. Next one will put Davidson over the limit from a team foul perspective. Junior Kadugan along with Gardner, Anderson, Mayo, and Lockett for Marquette. How about the set with Gardner just then leading it from a point center position? Shot clock is down to 14. Lockett on a kick out. High praise from his head coach. The way Lockett came in and became a leader right away in just one year at Marquette. Shot clock's down to three. Gardner! Shot off the moves, going to the rim, and he draws a blocking foul. It's going to be Clint Mann who hits the deck and picks up number three. First of all, with man taking a step like that, you got to give him credit. A guy 290 pounds coming at him. And this is a young man that's coming off a concussion himself. Right, exactly. So Trent Lockett, the swing man senior from Golden Valley, Minnesota, has impressed Buzz Williams in his one year with the program. As Gardner hits on the first. And right now, let's check in with Ali LaForce. He finished his degree after just three years at Arizona State so he could move closer to home to be with his mother, Judy, who's battling cancer. And since he finished his degree, he didn't have to sit out a year, and he was able to play right away. She said it's made all the difference in the world and is thrilled to have him back. And Trent is now working on his master's in leadership studies at Marquette. We've been told that Judy's cancer is in remission. Mm. So we wish her all the best in the Lockett family. Well, that's going to be a walk going the other way. Jarrah Powitz called on the travel. And Judy in attendance here, cheering on Marquette, Trent's mom. Trent had a good career at Arizona State. Averaged 13 points and six rebounds a game as a junior. Was a big part of that program. The scoring numbers have gone down. Anderson's jump shot doesn't go, but his importance to the team, according to Buzz Williams, called him the most important player right. on the team yesterday when we chatted with him. Absolutely, and, and one of the things right now, I mean, this is really just, we talked about in our first game, Butler and Bucknell, this is turning into like a possession game also. Cohen from the outside. Oh. It's off. Rebound, 50-50 ball. Marquette gets to a lot of them. And it'll be a tie-up. Possession arrow to Davidson. Look at Buzz Williams in the upper part of the screen. He's out there trying to call a timeout. 
Good anticipation, but as Buzz knows the rule, you have to have possession before you can pull that one off. Davidson started the game on a 12-2 run since that point. Marquette has outscored the Wildcats 16-7. This shows you kind of with loose balls what the tournament is all about, in my opinion. Guys understanding in close games the importance of possessions, the way their intensity level. That's what makes it a treat to be able to sit here and watch them play, play you know, all day long. Cochran swings it in. Cohen on a spin. Bank shot, no. Rebounded by O'Toole. Well defended, too. Used the body bump at first. Didn't allow Cohen to make his move. Take a look at the way Davidson keeps squeezing the floor iron from the opposite side. When the ball goes to the left or the right. Lock it with two defenders there. Oh. O'Toole, he traveled. Yep. Great effort by O'Toole to get the offensive rebound, but could not stay upright. You know, different strokes for different folks when it comes to coaching. Buzz Williams on the left, Bob McKillop on the right. What's the difference? No, I'm just, just letting your pictures do the talking once in a while. <laughs> Buzz has got the jacket off. McKillop looks like he could go to a cocktail party or, right yeah, now. Or CEO. Or, you know. Now, both have done tremendous jobs with their respective programs. McKillop has been at it a long time. And Williams is the basketball lifer, bounced around as an assistant coach, got his opportunity at the University of New Orleans, and now with Marquette. And look at the defense, is just picking up. Cohen a three, too strong. Whoa. Rebounded by O'Toole as Brooks takes a shot. O'Toole was not going to give up that rebound position. Derek Wilson in at the point guard spot for Marquette. Golden Eagles looking for their first lead, and a push. So, free throws coming up. Be the first to know the latest news on all your teams with Bleacher Report's Team Stream app. Stay one step ahead. Check out Team Stream on your iPhone, iPad, or Android device today. Second foul on Cohen. That's now 18 fouls against Davidson. That sends Jamil Wilson to the free throw line, 74% shooter. Out of Racine, Wisconsin. All tied up, 19 apiece. Marquette is now 5 of 6 from the free throw line. Second free throw for Wilson. And he goes 2 out of 2. Marquette's got its first lead of the day. Thanks to a 7-0 run. 5-0-8 remaining. We're in the first half. 20 to 19. Eight.com slash women's final four. Didn't make a splash, but I guess they made a splash with the next year's recruiting class coming in, don't you think? Uh, yeah, that was front page mm. news here in Ooh. Lexington today. <laughs> Everything about Kentucky basketball is front page, but fair you're absolutely right. 20 to 19. Marquette in front. Davidson has missed its last five shots and a foul called. It will be Wilson with the contact. That's number two. Well, here's that little step out. You know, I think this is something that guards can take advantage of more that they don't. Is when a big guy steps out to help out on a screen. And you see it closer to the basket around the top of the key area. The guards with the basketball should kind of steer right into them, bounce off them. And you'll get 75% of those calls going your way. And now it sends Nick Cochran, number one in the country in free throw shooting at 94%. So coming in 112 for 119, and there's news right there. There's 120 <laughs> and a miss. Davidson is now three of seven from the free throw line. Number one as a team in Division I play. Kadugan wheels his way to the hoop, and Marquette extends the lead. 9-0 run for the Golden Eagles, the number three seed in the East. Damon Brooks outside for Kalinowski. J.P. Coleman looking to get going here. Catch and fire. Cherapowicz can't hit the three. Davidson has gone cold. Kadugan on the push. Mayo. That's a good time to drive the basketball when you're in the middle of the floor against Davidson. Kadugan. There's the penetration. Bank shot, no. Rebound taken away from Lockett. 
Whipping a pass ahead. Shara Poets to the hoop. Running one-hander. No. Tiffin got redirected. Coleman got a piece initially. And then Gardner came in. Last touch by Marquette. Three-point lead for Mar Finishing it off. We saw Lockett put it on the floor. That's what they do. They like to come at you. They play aggressively. They don't take a possession off. A talented bunch, but they definitely have an advantage with the strength and size, so take advantage of it as much as you can. 14 to 4, they've outscored Davidson in the paint. The Wildcats have missed their last eight shots from the field. It's a 9 0 Marquette run. Middle zone look. Kalinowski misses an air ball from three. And he's a streaky three point shooter, too, Kalinowski, but they went to a zone just then. Marquette switching it up a bit. Jake Thomas is in for Marquette. Buzz Williams will go deep. Travel. That was DeMond Brooks pulling the chair out from under Chris O'Toole. Yeah, here it is, right? Little bouncing, little bumping. Marquette fans might say that's a hook, but by rule, just so you know, when you catch the ball in your possession and you fall to the floor, that's an automatic traveling violation. Does O'Toole at that point feel like there's going to be a body there to bounce up against? Yeah, well, that's that concept that you touched on, right? Pulling the chair out just basically means that the defender is leaning on you. You feel him as an offensive player. You want to use his body to position yourself, and then all of a sudden, he disappears. A little tricky dribbling out front, huh? Nick Cochran handling the ball. This has been a cold spell for Davidson, trailing now 22 to 19. Brooks taking it to the rim. DeMond Brooks, he'll head to the free throw line. His first field goal of the day. As we spoke about on the open, watch this scene that opens up. And terrific delivery with the length and flipping it up. But you, you don't get that unless you're aggressive from the 15 uh, foot mark and in. So Brooks really going after it. The thing I like about it, you'll notice right now he's a left-handed shooter. Just comes up short on that one, but finished it with his right hand to drive to the basket. Had a sensational sophomore season and then was slow out of the gate in his junior year. Bob McKillop said that he trusted the system, was fighting a lot of different things, was hesitant. Sometimes he tried to do too much, but now has really picked it up. Especially in the conference tournament. Yeah, 24 and 8, I believe, right? In the championship game. It was. Dive for the ball. Controlled by Chara Powitz for Davidson. Down by one against Marquette. Cochran gives it up. Catch and fire. Kalinowski oh, can't get it to go. Man. Bodies flying. As Brooks goes down, so does Lockett. And a foul called against Marquette. It's going to be Lockett picking it up. That's wow. 10 team fouls now against mm. the Golden Eagles. Yeah, look at this. Man, that's a double team. Brooks gets tossed out of the fray. But DeMond Brooks is just one of five from the free throw line. 77% on the season. That one looked better. Wichita State with the win over Pitt. 73 to 55. Wow. So the Big East goes down there with Wichita State moving on. The number nine seed will play the winner of Gonzaga Southern from Salt Lake City. And everybody's speaking about Gonzaga with all the tools, right? Big guys, the balance of their game, the, the guards. It's going to be interesting whether that conference comes back to haunt them or not, right? That's the argument yeah. that people will make about them. Well, you know, their conference wasn't that great. Well, nobody's in a conference right now. It's amazing, though, <laughs> over the last five, six years, the transformation. Butler no longer an underdog right. in this tournament. Gonzaga no longer a nice story. Yeah. Right. They're a one seed. Yeah, teams, teams are making their name, knocking those guys That's off right. as they used to. 23-22, Davidson in front. We're down to 2.05 to play in the first half. Cadugan trying to make it happen with a runner. And it's rebounded by Brooks for the Wildcats. Well defended, though. Kadugan likes to come right at you, shake it a little bit, using the strength. Cochran on the perimeter. Troni now, two-man game. Cherepovic lets it fly. Doesn't go. Rebound. Knocked out of bounds. And touch last by Marquette. So Davidson retains possession up by one.
Midwest region, St. Louis advances the victory over New Mexico State. They will play the winner of Oklahoma State and Oregon coming up from San Jose. I am when Tara Poets shoots the basketball from the outside obviously he's a good shooter right he's 40 percent from three but what happens is you're dragging a big guy out with him which allows another opportunity on the offensive glass and so now they've switched a little bit to put anderson on him and that's a good defensive move by buzz williams because it leaves your big down deep as long as possible davidson hit its first four three corners of the game they've missed their last six you see now Droney has the big on him. Brooks outside Cherokowitz. Man, Trevor on the perimeter, no call. On a dunk down. Brooks works his way to the rim for the deuce. Well, the Marquette fans behind Buzz Williams' bench over there thought there was a travel, but they play on and Brooks finishes it off with his power to his left side, his strong hand. We hit the one-minute mark of this first half. Anderson puts the head down, but misses on the bank shot. O'Toole trying to clean it up, and he draws the foul. Chris O'Toole is going to the free-throw line, where he does struggle, 45%. Brooks shoots the basketball at 50%, and here's why. He's very quick, and I love the way he gets that right shoulder around the defender. And from that standpoint, if you're trying to get to the basket, you try to get that shoulder from that side of the floor past the defender, and then the defender, is, the only thing he can do is give up the layup or usually foul you. Oh, truly short on the first attempt. Watch live games on your computer, iPhone, iPad, and select Android devices with NCAA March Madness Live. Watch now at NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. We talked about Gardner shooting at 84% from the line. I am O'Toole only at 45%, so a little bit of a difference. Some people say if you could squish those two guys and blend them together, you'd have some center. But they do a pretty good job in their roles. Are you one of those people? Yeah, I think you could. O'Toole on the swishes, though. No, that, that would be strange. I think I've seen that movie. Nine rebounds for O'Toole, two blocks. What movie haven't you seen? Oh, that's a fair point. 25-23, <laughs> Davidson. Clint Mann back in playing with three fouls. Shot clock is down to seven. We're down to 28 seconds to play in this first half. Ball for grabs. Off of Droney, the 50-50 balls that we talked about. It's a tie-up possession arrow to Marquette with 23.5 left in the first half. All right, here's the way you put the ball up for grabs. Every... Twenty-five, twenty-three. Davidson. Twenty-two seconds to go in this first half. You want to sit on this until about seven seconds or so. Real condensed. Take a look right there. You know, across the board, they got three Davidson players. They switch to a zone right now. They don't do it that often. We're down to six seconds left. Cadugan with five. Down to four. Wilson the pump. Down to two. Down to one. Wilson no. Attempt doesn't go, and that's the end of the first half. Gardner thought he was fouled on the play. Bob McKillop with a great defensive move against Buzz Williams' squad going to the zone look. There. Plays that we need to be able to finish. I thought there in the middle of the half we were pretty good on both ends. We've got to be able to do that for 20 minutes. All right, good luck, Coach. Thanks. All right, Allie, thank you very much. We start playing this second half from Rupp Arena, and it's the 14 seed in the East leading the number three seed, Davidson. Two-point edge on Marquette. The jumper to get things started in the second half is off the mark for Cherapowitz. Little switch right there. We saw Davidson switch to their zone. Just then we see Marquette come out with the trap in the backcourt a little bit. Davidson takes a quicker shot. Vander Blue averages 14.3 points per game, held to two in that first half. And Blue sat for a long portion of the first half. O'Toole is fouled on the inside. They surrounded O'Toole, who established excellent position. And a real good set, too, just to start it off for Marquette. But take a look at what happened in this first half. The physical play of college basketball becomes a discussion item, I think, across the country in the NCAA tournament in terms of the physical play and how far the officials let them play or not. It's always an interesting subject matter. Oh, Tule at the free throw line. Over on CBS, Memphis leading St. Mary's 49-42, just over two minutes to play. 
Actually, a good effort there by Black. Come Tarek Black coming off the bench from Memphis. I am doing a good job. That's what they really need, some post-up presence. Conference USA champions, questions that they dealt with coming right. into this tournament. How would they handle better competition? Good start here, Marquette, with their real strong pressure out front on the perimeter. We saw the traps, the first possession. First minute of play, second half. It's Brooks on the perimeter. Kuhlman swings it inside. Cohen slips to the rim. Pretty good delayed cut, too, by Cohen just then. Timing is everything, right? Just wait it out, be patient, and make sure your big guy who's defending you leans towards the opposite end of the floor and then cut on him. Ten points for Jake Cohen. 27-25, Davidson. Spread the floor. Anderson looking down low, trying to establish Otule. They double him. And that's where they're coming from, the weak side, remember. So if you reverse it, you should have something happening. Here Whoa, go. with a penetration. And he draws the foul. Got a little flip up near the rim. He's going to the line. They work both sides of the floor, and there's the slip cut. Nobody's home. Good job there by Davidson to run that play to perfection. Cherapowitz picks up the foul, and it sends Vander Blue to the free throw line. Well, Junior from Madison, Wisconsin, very aggressive. He's got a flashy game. All Big East second team this year, a hybrid guard. So I'm glad you didn't start speaking about free throw shooting just then for him to jinx him. Bob McKillop mentioning that we have some impact. Well, on that, huh? I don't think Bob McKillop would mind if we <laughs> jinx Marquette. <laughs> yeah, I think he's more than comfortable with us talking about Marquette's free throw shooting. Do you, do you feel in the studio that Ernie Johnson supported this or no. left this out there to dry no. a little bit? No, I, I felt he was on Bob McKillop's side. <laughs> I was completely offended at halftime. Right down the middle. Wow, Cohen misses on the floater. He was trying to avoid a charge. There's not about the basket. Cadogan swings it. Blue trying to take the baseline. Anderson gives it up. Cadugan, the leaner, comes off the rim. And a strong rebound by Damon Brooks. I like the way Davidson is back there rebounding and really putting four guys underneath. Cohen the catch and a release for two. Good look by Cochran, too, outside, recognizing what's going on. Just reading the situation perfectly. Davidson returned all five starters from last year's NCAA tournament team. They've got a 29-27 lead on Marquette. Entry, Otule finishes. He's had a couple of possessions with Otule trying to get himself positioned properly. And anytime you can use the body and ride your guy up the line a little bit, make sure that entry pass goes to the baseline. Marquette has executed well twice on that. During the 17-game winning streak, Davidson's shooting 49% from the field. They're shooting 37% here today. Cohen the fake, the pull-up pop, tried to bank it in. And the rebound controlled by Marquette. It was knocked over to Kadugan. Uh, tough shot, too, for Cohen. You don't know whether to take that one and float it over or go backboard, but it's tougher to go backboard from that angle. Here's Blue putting it on the floor. Whoops. Anderson with Chera Poets. Just over three minutes gone by in the second half. Kadugan good off the bounce. Kadugan gives it up. Blue now. The jumper. He carries it. Vander Blue beginning to get his fingerprints on this game. He's got six. 31-29, Marquette Cohen in the post. Jake Cohen. A twirl inside for Cohen as he put it up and over Otule. Yeah, he's doing his work beforehand as Gardner gets up off the bench. He's setting himself up against Otule, who looks a little tired this minute. Lock it across over, leans in, can't get it to go. It's knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Davidson. Here he's wide open, Cohen down on the blocks. Good delivery to get it to him. Now watch this fake, too, here on the second one. He's going to go to his left, our left looking at it, and then finishing it across. So setting himself up very, very patient, even though he's going up against two guys who outweigh him and have been leaning on him all afternoon. Cohen's going to get a breather. Clint Mann is in. Jump shot, blue, too strong. Wilson comes flying in to just keep that ball alive, but it's going the other way. Let's take a look. Off the right yep. foot of Jamil Wilson. Yep. 
Uh, good work by the officials. Well, we talked about how Marquette was able to battle back in this game, establishing the paint. Davidson is caught up in that category. It's now 14-14 in paint points. And we're tied at 31. And that's the Cohen factor, right, in terms of being able to position himself. Now, he's not on the floor right now, so let's take a look at Davidson more towards an outside presence. Let's see if they get Brooks involved a little bit more. J.B. Kuhlman has been held scoreless, 0 of 2 from the field for the Wildcats. you got a high low with Brooks if they go for it. Kuhlman, a 3. Good work both sides of the floor, though. They have the high low set up for Brooks. Not there. They look past it, and they go the other way. I think we're going the other way right now also with the big fella pushing his arm out. He's got Gardner in the middle. Gardner trying to set up. Buzz Williams upset. 51-46 as they approach a half minute to play in regulation. Ian and Jim. All right, Greg, winner there will take on Michigan State. Made easy work of Valparaiso earlier today in Auburn Hills. Three-point game here in Lexington. Davidson 34, Marquette 31. 15-38 to go in this second half. A little bit of a trap again by Marquette in the backcourt. They get back to their man-to-man. -man. Man able to get it across for Davidson. J.P. Kuhlman using the man screen. Cochran now feeds the post. Brooks. Against the much bigger O'Toole. And a foul called. It was Cherapowitz who was moving towards the lane area. Well, what happens? it up. Yeah, with Bob McKillop's offense right there, they go left side of the floor to the right side, and they were ex executing that part of it. The Cherapowitz then runs down to set a screen, and he's moving, did not get him set. So it's the right call from the officials. He's going to sit. Tom Droney checks in. Jeroni was a starter each of the last two years, now in his junior season out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Davidson up by three. Into the hands of Cadugan. Double team. O'Toole gets rid of it. Blue. Just over five minutes elapsed in the second half. See the condensed, watch the Davidson when they come to the middle of the floor, try to get it down deep, they sag. Blue over man, knocks it down, it's a three. We're tied at 34, tough shot by Vander Blue, contested. Yeah, three and nine from the floor, so he's starting to get more and more involved right now with his nine points, looking to get, take charge a bit. He can also put it on the floor and go by people. Droney dumps it inside, Brooks. Double team, swatted out of there by O'Toole. Third block for O'Toole. Wilson steps into the three, in and out, and a push inside against Mann. O'Toole going for the offensive board. So here you see a little contact out front. Mann bounces back just a little bit. Enough time for Blue to get that shot off. It's kind of a separated. Question is then, does he extend that right arm far enough to get the official's call? Not that trip. Mann will sit, replaced by Jake Cohen. And now we'll get Tyler Kalinowski in, replacing Damon Brooks. 14 fouls against Davidson. And Kalinowski was 0 for 2 from 3, but keep an eye on him because he spreads the floor pretty well. He's a good 3-point shooter. Wilson stumbles, and he stepped on the baseline. Out of bounds. Turnover Marquette. Now let's take a look. He goes by him, gets the shoulders by, and then slides that right foot. Good catch. Good shot there, and goes the other way. Buzz Williams said Jamil Wilson is the best athlete that he's had at Marquette. The question with Wilson has been his motor. Just wants to see that more consistently. Wilson averaging nine and a half points and just under five rebounds per game off the bench. A big game recently, 19 against Notre Dame, so he can light it up in a hurry. Coleman puts it on the floor. The drive and dish. Was it tipped? It was. Last touch by Marquette. Davidson beat the College of Charleston in the Southern Conference Final 74-55. to Their last loss, January 14th to Georgia Southern, 70-57. to So that's 17 straight wins. This team was 9-7 at one point this season. They beat the Citadel to go to 10-7. They haven't lost since. They're 26-7. Cohen on the outside. The spin, Cohen, and that ball was tipped by O'Toole. 
Never got the footwork down on there. Pretty good spin out front, but then lost his balance. Marquette trying to regain the lead here. Otule sealing off the inside. Double? Doesn't matter. Otule scores on the interior. So you make that happen with your hands, too. You get your hands out there for the catch. You set yourself up in body-wise, but you're right. Just too, too strong and powerful, even with a double coming from the other side. Nine points, ten rebounds for Chris Otule. The senior from Richmond, Texas. It's a new career high in rebounds. Cochran gives it up. Gets it back from Kuhlman. Look at the reactions by the Marquette perimeter players. Every catch is somebody out there guarding. Golden Eagles up by two. Cohen the sweeping hook. Does it go? And it's rebounded by Wilson for Marquette. Derek Wilson out there with Jamil Wilson. Otule, Blue, and Lockett rounding out the five on the floor. Work the perimeter. Shot clock is down to 12. Wilson, defended by Kalinowski. Now it's Jamil Wilson. A double. Cohen the denial. And it's out of bounds off of Wilson. There's a perfect example of how Davidson is playing their defense. The post-up move by Wilson, but watch the big fella. He steps in right there to put up a, a wall that doesn't allow a good shot to come off. So you have to work first, and the second guy in usually gets the credit for the play. First guy has to make the attempt defensively to set that up. But Bob McKillop's team is doing a terrific job of weak side help coming across the floor when necessary. Gardner and Taylor in. Now Blue is going to sit, replaced by Mayo. Cohen will trigger in. His team is down by two. We've got 12.33 to play. Second half here in Lexington. Second round action from the East Region. The number 14 seed, Davidson, trailing Marquette, 36 to 34. Haven't had much success putting it on the floor and going by people. Little reach out there. No, no reason to do that with Mayo. Ball's going away from the basket. So that'll work against Todd Mayo, the sophomore from Huntington, West Virginia. Tournament summary, Atlantic 10 is unbeaten, 3-0. St. Louis, NCAA tournament wins in consecutive seasons. First time in school history, Wichita State. First NCAA tournament win since 2006 as they knock off Pitt. Davidson started this game 6 of 10 from the field. The Wildcats have hit on 6 of their last 23 attempts. They have not had a field goal in over three and a half minutes. Over on CBS, Memphis, two-point lead against St. Mary's with one second to play. You can check out the action and all the madness over on CBS. Somebody for Davidson has to put the ball on the floor and go by somebody on the perimeter for Marquette. And they're just going around and not doing anything with the ball. Kalinowski gives it up. There's Cohen with 10 to shoot. Brooks is back in. Cochran on a shovel. Jump shot doesn't go for Drenny. But Davidson was right there ready for it. Cochran in a good spot as that ball kicked off to the left corner. He was out in the left corner. He's got some action down deep. And like the... it's going to be Cohen working against Gardner. Cohen got thrown down. He disagrees with the call. What else stands out about this matchup? Well, Marquette's Rimmer started out shooting very poorly. That's where they got a bunch of their offensive rebounds. But what's standing out to me, really, for the most part, is the fact that the aggressiveness in terms of both sides of the floor defensively, especially Marquette on the perimeter. Jump shot doesn't go for Lockett. And a foul called off the rebound action. It's going to work against Marquette. Memphis holds on for the win against St. Mary's, and it will be the 3-6 matchup in the Midwest in Auburn Hills, Michigan State, and Memphis on Saturday. Blue called for his third foul. And Memphis shoots 41%. Catch and shoot. Doesn't go for Kalinowski. Inside the finish by Droney. The offensive glass the last two trips to Davidson very friendly. 38-36, Davidson. Nice help from the backside. But Kalinowski yeah. could not stay on his feet. A near turnover for Marquette. And here we go. Staying on the play. Good work. Davidson working the glass, working the boards. Jay Cohen to the bench. He's replaced by Chris Cherapowitz. 
Cohen sits with 14 points on 6 of 15 from the field. Cohen has those three fouls, too. Gardner squeezes his way towards the rack. Really just too much to handle for Brooks. One-on-one -on -one down on the blocks. Nine points now for Devontae Gardner, the junior. Tied at 38. Just under 11 minutes to play in the second half. Droney gets it inside. Brooks off the window. It doesn't go, but a foul called. Damon Brooks to the free throw line. Buzz Williams and company continue to try to get the blocks, the touches, and he's very patient, isn't he? Look at him, he just waits it out and then uses that strength and size to power his, power his way by, not leaping through people or over people, but just positioning himself with the footwork. On the other end, Gardner called on his third personal foul, and Damon Brooks at the free throw line. Davidson up by one. Devontae Gardner, sixth man of the year in the Big East this season, and a load to deal with inside as Brooks knocks down a pair. 40 to 38, Davidson in front. Davidson sliding into a 2-3 zone right now. Gonna try to collapse the floor as much as they can down low to keep it out of the blocks, off the blocks, I should say. Force it to the outside. Blue, pump fake. Outside Kadugan. Now it's Lockett with 12 to shoot on the skip pass. Shot clock is down to eight. The spin by Wilson. Blue steps into the three. Air ball. Lockett does save. Wilson is there. He can't finish it, but a foul. And that is all Lockett keeping that play alive and creating an opportunity for Buzz Williams' squad. Yeah, this is... A nice reach around right there. He's trying to knock it off Cochran. He doesn't get it there. And then it goes right to Marquette, to Wilson, to go to the basket with it. And by the way, very, very close with the shot clock. Was just about empty on that trip. And very, very close to Lockett being out of bounds yep. before he got rid of the pass. Follow tournament scores, stats, and news live on the CBS Sports app. Get it free by texting SCORE to 42777 or by visiting cbssports.com slash mobile from your phone or tablet. Wilson goes one out of two. Marquette down by one. We will hit the halfway point of this second half. Winner will play Butler, who earlier today knocked off Bucknell. Brooks. Not going to take the three, a 22% shooter from out there. Kalinowski will. And hits. He's streaky. He comes off that bench. He's just looking to spread the floor. Off the drive. It doesn't go for Marquette. Down to 9.35 to play. Davidson up by four. That shot is good. Nick Cochran. Extends the Davidson lead, 45 to 39. Well, that was a low me to sleep type of play at the offensive end. They've been sitting on the perimeter. They have not been driving to the basket. Then all of a sudden, Cochran makes that move. Davidson up six. So, Greg, the Conference USA, Memphis Tigers getting the win, their final year in that conference, and they advance the number six seed in the Midwest to take on third-seeded Michigan State in Auburn Hills, Michigan. 11-3 run for Davidson over the last two minutes and change. They've got a 45-39 lead on Marquette, the number three seed, the Golden Eagles, against the number 14 seed, the Wildcats of Davidson. The back in by Wilson. Turns, trying to create some space. Kadugan the drive, the pull up. Off the rim, it doesn't go. Rebound, knocked around, Lockett's got it. And he draws the foul. Lockett going to the free throw line, a chance to cut into this Davidson lead. Celebrate 75 years of March Madness by voting for your all-time players, teams, and moments of the NCAA tournament. Vote now at NCAA.com slash March Madness. Lockett shooting it at 74% at the free throw line. A little run of a couple of minutes here where things just haven't been working for Marquette. 
Sharapovich called on the foul, his third. Lockett goes one out of two as mom Judy in attendance. Trent's sister, Taylor, plays volleyball at Duquesne. Talented family. Davidson up by five. And they get by that front two-man trap up in the back court, and then they just patiently look to execute. Buzz Williams changing now to its zone. If they can get the ball, yep, there it goes, right to the middle area to Brooks. He gets a touch, turns with a drop step. Well covered there by O'Toole, nine to shoot. Cochran now with six on the clock. Oof, Near right. steal, Brooks the crossover. Brooks rejected by O'Toole. He has been a terror defensively, his fourth block. Kadugan the lob. Good pass. Wilson the catch in traffic, now in some trouble. Vander Blue out of bounds on the sideline. Turnover Marquette. All right, and that was a good pass to the post, except for the fact it kind of hung up there, right? It didn't get down quick enough. And then he has to save it by pushing it out to the sidelines. And I guess that's a pretty easy call, don't you think? When you're half a foot out of bounds. Not that it's a factor right now, but as you get deeper, if Marquette is trailing in this game, they have the worst three-point shooting percentage of any team in the NCAA tournament field, and they are one of eight here today. Again, it's only a five-point game, but you get deeper into this game, if Davidson is able to extend, Marquette has a tough time coming back from those kind of deficits because of their poor shooting from three. And how about an 80% free-throw shooter team? On the spin inside, gives Davidson a seven-point cushion. So to your point, Ian, you're down, right? If you're down four minutes to go and you need to start fouling, you're going to be fouling the best shoot, free throw shooting team, and you're not an outside shooting team. Blue off the mark for three. Nice run down. Scrambles for it. Brooks comes away with it. Brooks a little bit out of control, and it's out of bounds off of Davidson. What a wild exchange there from half court all the way in. And here comes a full stick going down deep. Nobody guards him initially. He's open for a second. Way too late with the way Davidson passes the basketball. Seven and a half remaining. The number 14 seed in the East. Leading third seeded Marquette. It's Davidson 47 and the Golden Eagles 40. Do they want to trap or not? Are they just taking some time off the clock? Just make Marquette think about what defense they're in. It's back to a 2-3 zone. Marquette gets into its offense here, 18 to shoot. Anderson back on for the Golden Eagles. Bob McKillop using his scouting report, thinking that Marquette has some trouble shooting from the outside. Lockett makes his move, gets into the teeth of the defense, has it blocked from behind. I like the drive by Lockett against the zone. He really had pretty good opportunities. Two of them coming through the lane just then. Sealed pretty quickly, though. Cochran. Tried to take it off the dribble against Blue. You see, they just keep spreading the floor on you. They make you play them defensively, and they don't hurry into a shot. Cochran looking down low, couldn't get it inside to Brooks. Keep it on the perimeter. Now Cohen will get a touch. Six to shoot. Cohen against Anderson. Chuck clock down to three. Cohen, it's good. Jake Cohen. He's got 18. He's given Davidson a nine-point lead. And he has given them the big buckets in the last couple of minutes when they really need them. Putting the pressure on Marquette to respond. Inside, Gardner spins. Tip ball. And last touch by Davidson. A year ago, Davidson lost to Louisville 69-62 to in the second round. The Cardinals went to the Final Four. Knows that he can jump over people down deep with that extended hook shot. Little jump hook. Against the 6-6 Anderson that trip. 17 game winning streak. That's the longest in the nation. Davidson at 26 and 7. They've got a nine point lead on Marquette out of the Big East. Wilson the drive. Long strides. Wilson can't finish around the rim. Battle for it. O'Toole and Brooks. And a tie up call from one official. And the other official has come in. Yeah, I think what you're going to see here is O'Toole going over the top first. And that's going to be the foul. And then there'll be a tie-up right after it. So let's see if O'Toole comes in. Ball's up still for grabs here. Now watch. He's over the top. Doesn't have the basketball. Good call from the officials. Nice work. So the tie-up was called Michael Irving. And then Randy McCall came running in yeah. to say O'Toole will get charged with his second foul. Uh, a little tip here. See who comes up with it. Davidson does. 
Yeah, that, that foul will override the jump ball. 11-2 run. Brooks on the inside. The flip, no, but a foul. It's Wilson who thought he was standing straight up defending Demond Brooks. And he'll have an opportunity to bring Davidson to a double-digit lead. Third foul against Jamil Wilson. All right, we don't know how this is going to play out in less than six minutes, right? But I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, the more powerful team, especially down low, in terms of being able to bounce people around, I would say Marquette has that edge. Davidson has not stepped away from it, though. They're still hanging in there with them. They're rebounding with them, even though they're down six from a rebounding standpoint. But I like the effort on a collective basis at both ends of the floor by Davidson to mix it up. Hard to ignore the numbers. 80% free throw shooting team, number one in the country. They are now 7 of 14 from the line. Ernie Johnson's going to have a field day on us. <laughs> <laughs> You're just so powerful, Jim. <laughs> Nine point leads for Davidson. Uh, they gotta get something going here, don't they, in terms of getting an offensive rhythm? Here's Kadugan zigzagging to the rim. And it's popped in. So Marquette crashing the boards. O'Toole got in there. And O'Toole now with 11 to go along with 11 rebounds. 49-42. Cochran gives it up. Kalinowski. And just continue with the high screens around the perimeter. Cohen on a kick out. Shot clock is down to 14. We're under five minutes to play. Seven point lead for Davidson. They'll either get Cohen in the blocks. They may just very well get a backdoor cut off these high screens to the wing. Cochran swing it out. Cohen a three. No good. And it's rebounded by Kadugan. Soft touch, wasn't it, from deep? Timeout called by Buzz Williams. 4.38 remaining. Second half. Davidson has got a seven point lead on Marquette. 59 to 57. Bob McKillop, 24th year at Davidson. He's been there since 1989. 452 career victories. And a chance to create another memorable moment. Here today in Lexington, the winner will play Butler as the Bulldogs beat Bucknell earlier. Thomas is off the mark, just into the game. Wilson got his hands on it, and it's out of bounds. Last touch by Marquette. So here's where we stand in the East Regional in Lexington. Butler advances the number six seed. Marquette and Davidson now with 4.22 to play. And the 14th seeded Wildcats in front. Marquette going 2-2-1 two, two, right now. They're trying to pick up the pace. Maybe get Davidson, Davidson to shoot the ball a little quicker than normal, but I'm not, I'm not buying it right now, just the way they execute their offense. Marquette is 1 of 10 from three-point territory. Jumper Kalinowski doesn't go. Yeah, that was right on the money, too, just short on the front iron. We had a great look over his right shoulder on that one. There you go. Go by somebody. Wilson shifting gears on a kick out for Blue. Blue. Floater doesn't go. Kalinowski fighting for it. Blue hits the deck. Another scramble for the loose ball. And a timeout called by Buzz Williams. Pretty good reaction by Buzz Williams right there. Look at this. I do like this timeout by Buzz Williams. I think he was ahead of himself in terms of saying, I know this possession is very, very big. I got to call this timeout because this is a, this is huge right here to keep their confidence in this game. Get it in for Thomas. Gives it up for Lockett. We're down to 337 remaining. Question is, what do they do with it? A little action. Good move to get it to Wilson. The back end. Wilson using his size. And it rolls off the rim for Marquette. It's going to count. Somebody yeah. grabbed the, the net. net. Yep. I can't believe how long this ball sat on the rim. First of all, right? Pace moving defensively. Looking for turnovers. And they're looking for quicker shots than normal by Davidson. Davidson went 0-3 against RPI top 50 competition this season. Losses to Duke, New Mexico, and Gonzaga. But this is the NCAA tournament. Anything goes. Yeah. Cohen trying to get it across. And he does to Cochran. 
Pretty good effort defensively just then by Marquette. But notice how patient they are. They get it across, touch of panic in the, the body, but then they go back and look to really pass the basketball around the perimeter. Cochran probing. Kalinowski spread the floor. Jarrah Poets, shot clock winding down, the fadeaway, short. And it's rebounded by Wilson for Marquette. Wilson hanging around the glass. Good job off that glass. Whoa, Brooks went for the steal. Wilson able to secure it. Lockett looking down low. Against the man-to-man, -man, you want to attack. Wilson, the spin. Wilson, the bank. Jamil Wilson, the transfer from Oregon. A little bit of rattle in Davidson in this backcourt right now. Oh, there's a foul. Cohen is fouled, and it's Wilson who came to greet him in the backcourt. Okay, so now you have... The action here, put it on the floor against the man-for-man, -man. go one-on-one -on -one if you're Wilson, and need I say, Ian, back to our point about three and a half minutes ago, right? Davidson at the line, 80% free throw shooting team. This is where they can really, really figure this game out if they make their free throws. His first trip to the line today, 83% on the season. And it's a team right now, seven of 14. Jake Cohen oh boy. gets the roll. The only player in the nation with at least 1,700 career points, 700 rebounds, 150 assists, and over 100 threes. Knocks down a pair. Better one on the second one. A little difficult or more difficult shooting on this stage than during the regular season, too, I might add. 51-46, Davidson. We're down to 2.15 to play. Back to their zone. That's going to try to squeeze the middle of the floor again. And the blocks don't allow the easy catch down deep by Gardner and force it to the outside where we touched on their 1 for 10 from the floor at the three-point strike. Here's Blue. On a dish for Lockett, 10 to shoot, under two minutes left. Still going to go by somebody. Wilson, a cross-court feed. Blue will fire the three. In and out. It's rebounded by Cochran. And well executed. There you see Wilson reaching around for the foul, but well executed. Blue had a beautiful look, too. I think Buzz Williams, as they die, thought that shot was going to go in, but he's a 30% shooter from the three-point strike. So Davidson really doing a good job of playing the percentages. Uh, Buzz Williams just indicated to Wilson, hey, we're not looking for a foul there. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure he was doing an automatic foul just then. I think he was just anxious to go get the ball. Cochran, 94%. 52-46. Davidson has this positioned exactly where they want this. They can turn this into a free throw shooting contest as long as they can hit them. And they get one more stop at the defensive end. They're in pretty good shape because Marquette will have no choice but the foul. Big, big possession on the offensive end right now for Marquette. We're down to 142 remaining here in Lexington. 53-46 Davidson, the 14 seed, leading the three seed in the east. Kadugan lines it up. Can't hit the three. Oh, the follow doesn't go, but Blue is fouled. And Vander Blue will head to the free throw line where he is a 72% shooter. Cochran called on his third foul. Marquette trying to cut it to five. Marquette is 13 of 17 from the free throw line. Vander Blue, second one coming. The survivor of this one will play Butler, the number six seed advanced with a win over Bucknell earlier today. And the beauty of Davidson's lineup, Ian, is that the big guys shoot free throws well. So a lot of times in situations like this, you say, you know what, we got to find the guard. Get the guard, who's usually the best free throw shooter. And yeah, that's true with Cochran at 94. But these other guys, like Brooks, for example, shoots it at 77. Not a bad guy to get the ball in his hands, too. Hasn't shot it well, though, here today. Five of 11. They handle the pressure. Kuhlman will get it across. We're down to a minute 25 to play. 53-48 Davidson. Now at this time on the clock, you want to make sure you play aggressively, defensively, but don't foul. Too late in the clock. Shot clock is down to 15. Kuhlman against Anderson, and there's the foul. Yep. So you're talking about 20-plus seconds that come off the clock. 
And the foul called against Marquette. The last time a 14 seed beat a three, 2010. Ohio, the Bobcat shot the Georgetown Hoyas. Armin Bassett, 32 points, 16 times in NCAA tournament history. A 14 seed has knocked off a three seed. See, I, and I'm big on playing the clock, right, and stopping the clock. But you have to look at the situation right there with that shot clock that low. You have to trade the time in for the foul at that particular point. You just can't bump somebody that far away. J.P. Kuhlman, 72% shooter. The lead is six. One out of two, rebounded by Lockett. Just over a minute to play. No need to three right now. You need something going to the basket, especially if you don't shoot it real well. Wilson will take the three. And makes the three. Jamil Wilson from long range. It's a three-point game with an even minute to play. Right. One minute to play. Winner will meet Butler in the third round. To Buzz Williams in no man's land as a coach right now, Ian Wright. You take a look at this. I think you just want to play this aggressively. The downside is that you're against a team that, that executes very well and shoots free throws. So if you don't get a stop here, you're really in trouble. But they're electing to go. It looks like to play it straight up. And that's his choice. And he's got to live with it right now from the defensive end of the floor. 44 seconds to play. 19 to shoot. The roll to the rim. Damon Brooks with the finish. Eventually they were going to get a backdoor cut to the basket with the pressure from Marquette. 56-51 Davidson. We're down to 33 seconds left. Kadugan has to make it happen quickly. Blue a pump. A fend off. A three. Oh! Vander Blue has cut it to two. Now the exercise is you have to go for your quick double teams. But who do you foul? They know they can spread the floor, but you better make a quicker decision than this. They're losing valuable seconds Absolutely. here. Absolutely. 20.2 on the clock and a foul given to the wrong man. It's Nick Cochran who shoots it at 94%. Well, you take a look at the action at the top of the key right here. A lot of action. The picks. Guys get double teamed there with the bounce. And they take the big guy, Gardner, away from the floor. And then you come right back and answer long range. But you couldn't have a better script right here if you're Davidson with this guy. Look at those numbers at 94%. The lead is three. 20.2 left of the clock. Jake Thomas is going to check in. He will take Lockett's spot on the floor. Three-point game. Second free throw coming for Nick Cochran. Over 1,000 career points at Davidson. The senior from Vancouver, British Columbia. Hits a pair. Four-point lead for Davidson. Bob McKillop with the timeouts right now, but I agree with his decision right here. Force Marquette to act without a timeout and the benefit of it. Four-point game. We're down to 14 seconds left. Kadugan gives it up. Wilson fires the three. Oh, yes! Jamil Wilson! It's a one-point game. Same exercise. Go for the quick foul. You can't waste the time. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Trying to save it. It's out of bounds. Marquette's going to get it back with five and a half seconds left. Down by one. Oh, I like you see, and Marquette has options right now. They get into the right hands going towards the basket, only down the point. Here we go. Yep. Five seconds left. Marquette down by one, trying to avoid the upset. Blue the drive, the left hand. It's good. One second to play. Vander Blue has put Marquette in front by one. Timeout, Davidson. A great decision. They had the options. I thought when he caught defensively, it looks like he's going to be guarding the ball. And he may not be the tallest guy, but he's got some nice wingspan. And then you have Cohen, who my guess is has a pretty good throwing arm, or he wouldn't be out of bounds right now. Davidson looking for the miracle. Down by one. Cohen the toss. It's intercepted. And it's over. Marquette with the rally. The Golden Eagles advance. Davidson thought they were going to have a mark.